Well, with so many places reopening amid this pandemic, experts still urging everyone to stay in, practice social dis distancing whenever possible. And with growing concerns over how to safely begin socializing again, a lot of people have turned to quarantine pods or social bubbling as a way to carefully reconnect with friends and we can have quarantines instead of quarantining. So here to tell us more is our very own Becky Worley. So many of us uh, trying to figure this all out, Becky. So how do you first define a quarantine pod or a social bubble? Oh, Amy, you're so right. Coronavirus has spawned ideas, words. It's like we need a new dictionary. So based on my interviews with virus researchers and infectious disease specialists, my definition of a quarantine pod or a social bubble would be a group of five to 12 people, preferably two or three families, that socialize together and they don't gather with others. All right, yeah, that is the key right there. Let's break down all of that. Remind us of the rules for socially distant socializing. Let me bullet point it. It's outdoors, preferably six feet apart, being careful about being in confined places when there's no airflow or breeze and with a mask on if you can. All right. And then this is a big question. How do you safely choose your social bubble? Like who gets in the bubble and who doesn't? Is this complicated or what? <laughs> um, you want to know what their behaviors are away from the group. So first, sort of the medical. Are they exposed to a lot of people at work? Is mom an ER doctor or dad working in a grocery store? Who else are they bubbling with? See, that's a new verb we didn't have before all of this. Does everyone get along? We're talking parents getting along with parents, kids getting along with kids. And also, you need to kind of think about your risk tolerance or the group dynamics. And you do need to think that out in advance and talk it out in advance. Yeah, yeah, we've all been doing this. I definitely have a, a bubble. And I think it's important to negotiate those parameters ahead of time. Like, how long will you be socially bubbling? Is that a thing? I don't know. Is that what you say? Uh, and, and, <laughs> and if you leave the bubble, can you come back in the bubble? Oh, man, you feel like a lawyer here, right? We need a prenup. <laughs> so these are really important questions. You kind of have to stipulate what you're in for. Uh, it's really important for everyone's safety and the health of the friendships. So we're going to lawyer this thing up. Uh, you should have a conversation on the phone or a Zoom call to talk out what your social bubble would look and act like. Have those uncomfortable conversations up front or you'll end up regretting it later. Um, you could set up an initial duration of two weeks for your bubble or your quarantine pod and see how it goes. Um, if you decide to leave the group, researchers say you need to probably take two weeks off from socializing, and then you can bubble with someone else. Um, plus, you could always break up and play the it's not you, it's us card, uh, you know, maybe talk about your nervousness with your exposure or blame the kids. That's one I always do. <laughs> and I think, you know, the one thing, Amy, above all, social bubbling is like fight club. The first rule of social bubbling is you don't talk about social bubbling. And the second rule is you don't post on Instagram about social bubbling. Yeah, I agree with that. Also, <laughs> I'm just really uh, a firm believer in blaming the kids, too. It always works. All right. Becky, we're with you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.